Hi, welcome to this Corporate Miles video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the Corporate Miles practice questions on news and samples. If you need any extra help on news and samples, if you go to Corporate Miles and go to the videos and worksheets section and scroll down to video number 281A, there's a dedicated video to show there on news and samples. Um, alternatively, you can scan the QR code in the front of this booklet. But in this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions, so let's get started. Okay, so let's have a look at our first question, question number one. So question number one says, a council carried out a survey to find out how many people from a local village have visited the library in the past six months. And the table shows the results. So we've got yes and we've got no, and 15 people said yes, and five people said no. And the population of the village is 240 people. And part A says, estimate how many people from the village have visited the library over the past six months. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to use this sample, the survey, to find out an estimate of how many people in the entire village have visited the library in the past six months. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the proportion of the people in the survey, or the fraction of the people in the survey, that have visited the library. So there's 15 people that have said yes out of the, if we add them together, 15 plus 5 is 20. So out of the 20 people, 15 of them have said yes. So that means that 15 twentieths of the sample have visited the library. And if we cancel that down, 15 twentieths, if we divide both of those numbers by 5, we get that's equal to 3 quarters. So that means that 3 quarters of the people in the survey have said yes. So that means that if we assume that this sample is representative, so we, that means that it represents the entire population, that means that three quarters of the village should have visited the library over the past six months. And the, and the key part of that is should have visited, they should have visited, because we, we don't know exactly if three quarters will have visited. But if this sample is representative, it gives us a good estimate. So we're going to work out three quarters of 240. So three quarters of 240. And to find three quarters of a number, you divide by the bottom, so you divide it by four, and then you times by the top, so you times by three. So we're going to take 240, we're going to do 240 divided by four, that's equal to 60, and then we're going to times by the top, 60 times three is equal to 180. So that would be 180, that's our estimate. If three quarters of the people in the sample have visited the library, our guess is, our estimate is, that three quarters of the entire village have visited the library, and that's equal to 180. Okay, so now the next part says the survey was carried out by asking a group of over 60 year olds. Now that's going to change things slightly. Okay, so that means that the sample may not have been representative. They only asked a group of over 60 year olds who may have more time because perhaps they've retired. Whereas if they asked a group of people from a range of ages, then it might be a bit more reflective of the entire village. And part B says, explain why this sample may not provide reliable data for the entire village. So because it's a group of over 60s, that may not be reflective of the entire village. So let's explain that. And that's it, and I've just written down that they may not be representative of the entire village, e.g. over 60s may go to the library more as they've got a bit more free time, perhaps. And that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number two. Okay, so question number two. Question number two says, a survey wants to find out how students travel to school. And she surveyed 50 students, and here are the results. So 27 of the students traveled by bus, 14 traveled by car, and nine students walked. And part A says, work at the percentage of students in the teacher survey that walked to school. So it's going to be nine out of how many students? Well, she surveyed 50, so that should be 50. And if we add them up, 27 plus 14 is 41, plus 9 is 50. So there's 50 students altogether. I've been asked to find what percentage walk to school. So that's going to be 9 out of 50. So 9 50 ifs. Now we want it as a percentage, that's a fraction. So we're going to double both the numerator and denominator. So if we double both the numerator and denominator, that's 18 one hundredths. So that's 18 out of 100, or 18%. And that's it. Okay, let's look at our next part, part B. So part B says that 400 students attended the school. So 400 students attend the school. And part B says estimate how many traveled to school by car. So we're trying to find an estimate of how many of these students traveled to school by car. So there's a few different ways we could approach this. One approach is to say, well, if we know that 14 out of the 50 students traveled by car, that's 14 out of 50. If we double it, that's equal to 28 out of 100, so that's 28%. So we could work out 28% of this number, and then that would be a good estimate. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write it as a fraction to begin with. So we want to find out the travel, an estimate of the number of students that travel to school by car. So that's 14 out of the 50. So that's 14 out of 50. So 14 out of 50 students travel to school by car. 
Now we could change that to percentage, but we know there's 400 students that attend the school. So I'm going to find an equivalent fraction with 400 on the denominator. Because if we find that equivalent fraction with 400 on the denominator, what's on the numerator will be our estimate of how many students travel to school by car. Because if it's 14 out of every 50, then whatever number this will be will be out of 400. Okay? So to get from 50 to 400, we multiply by 8. So if we multiply the numerator by 8, if we do 14 times 8, that'll be our estimate of how many out of 400 travel to school by car. So let's do 14 times 8. So 14 multiplied by 8. 8 times 4 is 32, put a 2 down, carry a 3. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 3 is 11. So that's 112. So that's 112 out of 400. So that means our estimate is 112 students would travel to school by car. And if you cancel that down, you get that's equal to 14 fiftieths. And that's it. And that's an estimate because obviously we don't know if our sample is representative of the entire school, but that would be our estimate if 14 out of 50 travel to school by car in our survey. Our estimate would be, if you times them both by 8, the numerator and denominator, that would be 112 out of 400, so our estimate would be 112 students. And that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question. Okay, so let's have a look at our next question, question number 3. So question number 3 says, Natalie owns a coffee shop and wants to find out how many disposable cups she will need in June. And she takes a sample of 200 drinks and records the size of the cup used. And the table shows information about her results. So we've got the, there's 58 small cups used, 110 regular cups used, and 32 large cups used. And part A says, what fraction of the drinks in the sample used a regular cup? So there's 200 cups used here in the sample, and 110 are for regular cups. So the fraction of the drinks in the sample that used a regular cup would be 110 out of 200. Now we need to cancel that down. It's a calculator question, so that's quite nice. If you just type in that fraction and press equals, that'll give you the answer. So if we type in our fraction button, 110 over 200, we get that's equal to 11 twentieths. So 11 twentieths. And that's it. So then we're told that in June, Natalie sold a total of 6,000 drinks in disposable cups. And part A says, work out how many large cups Natalie should have used. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at her sample. And her sample says that 32 out of the 200 cups that she used were large. So let's write that as a fraction, 32 out of 200. And actually, if we cancel that down, because it's a calculator question, that's equal to 4 25ths. So in her sample, we know that 4 25ths of the cup that she used were large. So it means that if for our estimate, what we're going to do is we're going to work out what 4 25ths of 6,000 is. If we work out what 4 25ths of 6,000 is, that would be a good estimate for how many large cups Natalie should have used. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide by the bottom and times by the top. So we're going to do 6,000 divided by 25 and 6,000 divided by 25 is equal to 240. And then we're going to take the 240 and multiply that by the top and that's equal to 240 times 4 is equal to 960. So our estimate for how many large cups Natalie should have used in June would be 960. And then part C. Part C says write down an assumption you made whenever you calculated your answer to part B. So we need to write down an assumption that we made. Well, we made an assumption that her original sample was representative of the drink sold. Um, so obviously that sample that she took whenever she took her sample of 200 drinks sold, this sample here. We're assuming that that's representative of the drinks that are sold in June. Perhaps they didn't buy as many large coffees if it was a really hot month or something like that. So let's write down an assumption. And that's it, so it's just written down that the sample was representative of the drink sold in June. That's a key assumption that we're making, that that sample is representative. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number four. Okay, so let's have a look at our next question. So question number four says, a researcher wants to find out people's opinion on a new wind turbine that's being built in a village. And he interviews five people from a neighbouring town. And we've been asked to write down two reasons why his sample may not provide reliable results. So first of all, the researcher wants to find out people's opinion on a new wind turbine being built in a village, and then he interviews five people from a neighbouring town. Now, the people from the neighbouring town may not be as interested or as emotive about this wind turbine being built as the people from the village itself. They may feel quite passionately about this wind turbine being built right beside their village. That would be one reason why this sample may not provide reliable results. So in terms of reason two, well, he only actually interviewed five people. And five people, well, that may not give you a representative sample. He may want to increase the sample 
sample size to interview more people and to consider people from different age groups and so on. Okay, so that's the two reasons that I would give. So let's write that down. And that's it. So I've just said, as the people who are sampled are not from the village, they may be less likely to object or, you know, they may not be representative of the people's opinions from the village. And also reason two is his sample's very small, so may not be representative of everyone's opinion. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number five. Okay, so question number five says, there's 30 students in a class and 18 of the students have school dinners. And altogether, there's 960 students that attend the school. Work out an estimate for the total number of students that have school dinners. Okay, so in terms of working an estimate of how many students that attend the school have school dinners, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this sample. Because it says out of a class of 30 students, 18 have school dinners. So let's work out the fraction of the class that have school dinners. And that's going to provide us with the only information we have in terms of the proportion of the students from the school that have school dinners. So let's look at that fraction. 18 out of the 30 students have school dinners. And if we cancel down that fraction, 18 30ths, if you cancel that down, that's equal to 3 fifths. And I've just used my calculator to do that, or you could divide both of those numbers by six. So we've got that's equal to 3 fifths. So that means that 3 fifths of the class have school dinners. So we're gonna assume that 3 fifths of the whole school have school dinners. So let's work out what 3 fifths of 960 is. And to work out 3 fifths of 960, we're gonna get our 960 and divide by the denominator, which is five. So 960 divided by five is equal to 192. And then we're gonna times by the numerator, 192 times three is equal to, times by three, 576. So our estimate for the number of students in the school that had school dinners is 576. And that's it. And we hope that that class is representative of the whole school. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number six. Okay, so question number six. Question number six is a head teacher wants to introduce a new school uniform. And he asks a sample of 40 students what color tie they would like. And the table shows information about his results. So we've got color, blue, green, red, and yellow, and the number of students. Seven want blue, eight want green, 16 want red, and nine want yellow. And we're told that 460 students attend the school. And part A says, work at an estimate of how many of the 460 would like a red tie. So we know that he surveyed 40 students because we're told that in the question, he surveyed a sample of 40 students. So if we add those numbers together, seven plus eight is 15, plus 16 is 31, plus nine is 40. So he surveyed 40 students, and we want to work out an estimate of how many of the whole school wanted a red tie. So let's work out the proportion of his sample that wanted a red tie. So the fraction of his sample. That's 16 out of 40. 16 out of 40 wanted a red tie. And if we cancel that down, and it's a calculator question, so 16 divided by 40 or over 40, it's equal to two fifths. So that means that two fifths of his sample wanted a red tie. So we're going to assume that two fifths of the whole school would like a red tie. So let's work out what two fifths of 460 is. And if we work out what two fifths of 460 is, that'll be our answer. So we're going to divide by the bottom and times by the top. So 460 divided by five is 92 times by the top times by two is equal to 184. So our estimate is that 184 students would like a red tie. Okay, and then part C. Part C says to write down an assumption that we made. Well, our assumption is that his sample is representative of the whole school. Did he interview a different range of age groups and so on? So our assumption is that the sample is representative of the whole school. And that's it, I've just written down the sample is representative of the whole school, that's our assumption. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number seven. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number seven. So question number seven says, in a box it is white, blue, and green sweets, and in total there's 4,500 sweets in the box. Jessica wants to find out how many blue sweets are in the box without counting them all. So she takes a sample of 20 sweets at random from the box, and she finds that 13 of them are blue, and then she returns those 20 sweets to the box. And part A says, work at an estimate for how many blue sweets are in the box. So we're going to use her sample, and we're going to hope that that's a good sample, a representative sample. And out of the 20 sweets that she took from the box, there's 13 in her blue. So the proportion of her sample that is blue is 13 twentieths of it. So 13 twentieths of her sample is blue. So that means that we're going to assume that 13 twentieths of the, all the sweets in the box are blue. So let's work out 13 twentieths of 4,500, and that'll be our estimate. So let's take the 4,500 and let's divide it by 20, and that's equal to 225, just dividing by the bottom. 
And then we're going to times by the top. So we're going to take the 225 and times that by 13, times by the numerator. And when we times that by 13, we get an answer of 2,925. So our estimate for the number of blue sweets in the box is 2,925. And that's a much quicker way than actually counting them all. Hopefully it's representative or hopefully it's close to the real thing. As long as our sample is random, that should be a good estimate, hopefully. And then part B says, Part B says, how could Jessica actually improve the accuracy of her estimate? Well, she only actually took 20 sweets. Now, I know she doesn't want to count them all, but perhaps she can maybe count 40 or 60 or 100 or something like that. So let's write that down. And that's it. I've just said she could choose more than 20 sweets in her sample. That'll give her more accurate results or a more accurate estimate, maybe 50 or 100. Okay, and let's look at our next question, question number eight. Okay, so question number eight says, Bethan creates a new travel company and she plans to offer holidays to four different countries, France, Portugal, Spain, and Turkey. And she surveys 250 people to ask them which of the four countries they'd most like to visit. And here are her results. So 74 people would like to go to France, 48 Portugal, 91 Spain, and 37 Turkey. And altogether that was 250. So it's 250 in that sample altogether. And then we're told that Bethan expects her company to make 12,000 bookings in the first year. And we've been asked to work out an estimate for how many bookings will be for Spain. So let's work out the proportion of her sample that wanted to go to Spain. So that's 91 out of 250. So let's write that down. 91 250ths of her sample wanted to go to Spain. So let's work out 91 250ths of all 12,000 bookings that she's expecting to find out her estimate for how many she thinks will want to go to Spain. So let's take the 12,000 and divide it by the denominator, which is 250, and that's equal to 48. And then let's times by the numerator, so 48 multiplied by 91 is equal to 4,368. So the estimate for how many bookings will be for Spain is 4,368. So let's write that down. And that's it. And that's it. So these have been the video solutions to the code mass practice questions on using samples. If you need any extra help on using samples, if you go to Code Maths and go to the videos and worksheet section and scroll down to video number 281A, there's a dedicated video tutorial there on using samples. Alternatively, you can scan the QR code in the front of this booklet. But in this video, we focus on the video solutions to the practice questions. I really, really hope you find this video useful. And please like it and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.